chapter 5. Now the Philistines had taken the ark of God, and they brought it from Eban Ezer unto Ashdod. And the Philistines took the ark of God, and brought it into the house of Dagon, and set it by Dagon. And when they of Ashdod arose early on the morrow, behold, Dagon was fallen upon his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord. And they took Dagon and set him in his place again. And when they arose early on the morrow morning, behold, Dagon was fallen upon his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord. And the head of Dagon and both his palms of his hands lay cut off upon the threshold only the trunk of Dagon was left to him. Therefore neither the priest of Dagon nor any that come into Dagon's house tread on the threshold of Dagon in Ashdod unto this day. But the hand of the Lord was heavy upon them of Ashdod, and he destroyed them and smote them with emerods, even Ashdod and their borders thereof. And when the men of Ashdod saw that it was so, they said, The ark of God of Israel shall not abide with us, for his hand is sore upon us, and upon Dagon our God. They sent therefore and gathered all the lords of the Philistines unto them, and said, What shall we do with the ark of the God of Israel? And they answered, Let the ark of the God of Israel be carried about unto Gath. And they carried the ark of the God of Israel about there. And it was so that after they had carried it about, the hand of the Lord was against the city with a very great discomfiture. And he smote the men of the city, both small and great, and emerods broke out upon them. So they sent the ark of God to Ekron. And it came to pass, as the ark of God came to Ekron, that the Ekronites cried out, saying, They have brought about the ark of the God of Israel to us to slay us and our people. They sent therefore and gathered together all the lords of the Philistines and they said send away the ark of the God of Israel and let it go back to its own place that it slay us not and our people for there was a deadly discomfiture throughout all the city the hand of God was very heavy there and the men that died not were smitten with the emerods, and the cry of the city went up to heaven. Okay, let's go back up to verse 1. And we'll remember from the last chapter now. Samuel's taken over. The glory's left Israel, and the Philistines have come out and battled against them, and have pretty, pretty heavy whipping on them. Verse 1, Now the Philistines had taken the ark of God, and they brought from Aban Ezer unto Ashdod. And we'll remember Aban Ezer means this this stone of help. And they they brought the they've got the ark and they brought it from there to Ashdod. And Ashdod means great destruction. And that's what's going to happen there. Verse two. And the Philistines, these drifters, those that have drifted from God, took the ark of God and brought it into the house of Dagon and set it by Dagon. Dagon. And Dog is the Hebrew word for fish. And that's what this is. It's their their half man, half fish God that they've made for themselves. He's not a God. This half fish, not a God. Half man, not a God. That they've set up. It's an image that's made by men that they fall down and worship in their ignorance. And when they of Ashdod arose early on the morrow, behold, Dagon was fallen upon his face, to the ground before the ark of the Lord and they took Dagon and set him in his place again and we'll notice here that their their little idol he's fell over and is laying on his face in the dirt before the ark of God or on the pavement there before the ark of God and they've had to take him and they've stood him back up where he was standing before he couldn't stand himself back up for and when they arose early on the morrow morning, behold, Dagon was fallen on his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord. And the head of Dagon and both the palms of his hands lay cut off upon the threshold. Only the trunk of Dagon was left to him. So now his head's done broke off and both his hands. They took away his understanding and, and his, all his work and his protection. And, they, and it's been, it's rolled or made its way to the threshold or the entry into this room that they would have this not a God set up in. 
and we'll notice that man here has to take and carry God back. See, man, man has to carry this, not a God, and set it back up in its way. But watch how the Lord makes his own way. See, God doesn't need man to fight for him. God's going to do his own fighting here, and they're going to be more than happy to help God along get out of where he's at. Back. He's going to make his own way back. He's going to let make men do, do it. And th this doggone, they just went in and picked him up. He didn't ask them. He didn't have no power. Five, therefore neither the priest of Dagon nor any that come into Dagon's house tread on the threshold of Dagon in Ashdod unto this day. So they pretty well learned their lesson here that Dagon ain't nothing but a big hunk of stone that somebody whittled out and that God is the real God, but the hand of the Lord, six, was heavy upon them of Ashdod, and he destroyed them and smote them with emeralds, even Ashdod and the borders thereof. So he's, now he's, God's punishing this place of Ashdod, this place of great destruction, and he sent emeralds upon them and these emeralds are burning tumors in the skin and these burning tumors are the hornets that that have been prophesied of in the past we've we've heard the word zora and these judges coming out from in between zora there and eshtaol in the last chapter we had ichabod born and this was the questioning eshtaol and here we now have the emeralds. This is, this is the hornets that God has sent. 7. And when the men of Ashdod saw that it was so, they said, The ark of the God of Israel shall not abide with us, for his hand is sore upon us and upon Dagon our God. And this is an example how they've tried to bring the ark of God, this with the law in it that was given to the Levite. And the Levite was the only one allowed to carry this thing around and to to deliver it, to bring it and use it. It was only given to the Levites to do this. And they brought this thing and set it up in their own borders and think somehow that they're going to prosper from it. That it was just a mistake to take it off the battlefield. But they've got it. And they've set it up in, the, in their little chamber there with their God. And it's already destroyed their God. And it's brought great harm and discomfiture in the flesh to them. And these are all signs of the end time when, when these that try to take over the covenant that God made and this ark of God that he created and he handed to the Levite, the Levite might teach the whole earth that what the word of God is. They try to use it, and it's just not going to do them no good. There's going to be great discomfiture of the flesh as we see today. Evil all about. There's men dying here. 8. They sent therefore and gathered all the lords of the Philistines unto them and said, What shall we do with the ark of the God of Israel? And they answered, Let the ark of God, let the ark of the God of Israel be carried about into Gath. And they carried the ark of the God of his, Israel about there. So now they've decided, well, this is, here's what we'll do. We'll just take it over here. We've got all the, the great minds of, of the Philistines here, these drifters. We've got all the, their great minds gathered together, all their lords, and this is the best they can do is, like, hey, let's carry it over to the next town. So they carry it over to Gath. Gath means wine press. And now we've got the Ark of God. They carried it to the second town. And we'll see what God does there. Verse 9, And it was so that after they had carried it about, the hand of the Lord was against the city with a very great discomfiture, and he smote the men of the city, both small and great, with emeralds, and the emeralds broke out upon them. So he does the same thing to Gath as he did to Ashdod. Maybe they thought that it was just a coincidence, but now they've got it over there, and it's been done twice now. They brought it to Gath, and these emeralds, these hornets have come out, and they're, they're plaguing the people. Men are dying. There's, there's a great slaughter going on. So they sent the ark of God to Ekron, and it came to pass, as the ark of God came to Ekron, that the Ekronites cried out, saying, They have brought about the ark of God of Israel to us to slay us and our people. So now the Ekronites, they've, they, they brought it over there, and they've done heard everything it's doing. And they said, Look, now they brought it here to kill all of us. And Ekron means plucked up by the roots violently, 
and we could just say ripped up. It's ripped up by the roots. This is the third place they've took it now, and it's complete. This would be the complete judgment of God for those that try to use his covenant and his ark to, to do something that's just going to plague the earth until it's rightfully restored where it belongs. Eleven, and this is the sign of the image uh, at the of uh, the sign of the end when they've took this, they've distorted it, they've carried it all about now, and it's plagued the whole earth, and God's waiting for them to carry and put it back where it belongs. They sent therefore and gathered together all the lords of the Philistines, and they said, Send away the ark of the God of Israel, and let it go back to its own place, that it slay us not, and our people. For there was a deadly discomfiture throughout all the city. The hand of God was very heavy there. And we'll see, now they finally come to some understanding. They said, Let's send this thing back where it came from, that this plague cease from among us three times they've they've understood that that what's going on and they they're ready to get rid of this 12 and the men that died not were smitten with the emeralds and the cry of the city went up to heaven so god's sitting there and he can hear these great cries and and all these screams of these people who are suffering with these burning tumors in their skin these emeralds these fleshful discomfitures and not only that, these are just the ones that didn't die. These are the ones that didn't die from this, this theft of the, of the covenant. So we're going to find out now. They're going to get this thing back to where it goes. God is already forcing them to put him back in his position. See, God didn't need the armies of Israel. God's taking care of business on his own over here. And Israel, they're they're over there hiding. They're they're hiding from this battle that Philistines have smote them, and they've been taken back under servitude. But Ark of God hasn't. It's making its own. It's making its own way back. See, and it will, because the law stands clear, and we'll find out. The prophets say in the end that this this law belongs to Levi, and it. He's the only one that can rightfully teach this law. All right, we're going to move on to chapter 6.